Hello and thank you for staying loyal with the show. It's always a pleasure coming your way to talk football. You're watching Football Planet on African News, your pan-African channel. Coming up. Voici les titres de cette émission. The conquests of Europe by Africans as the season draws to a close, many African footballers have been crowned champions in their respective championships, leading the park, Liverpool star Sadio Mane and Mohamed Salah. A solid defender but in fragile health, the Ivorian international is worried by his many injuries. Since Eric Bailey's arrival at Manchester United, the 2015 AFCON winner has missed no fewer than 64 matches and accumulated more than 365 days out of action for his club. And then, two guests on the show, Senegalese and the 20 international Moussa Khalilou Jite, the Grenoble striker who plays in the French League 2, will talk about his first season in France and his ambitions for the future. Next is Ajara Nshut Ngoya, one of the stars of African women's football, who will talk about her season at club level in Norway on the news of CAF cancelling the 2020 Women's AFCON. Details shortly. Welcome to the show. The coronavirus has turned everything upside down, but the passion for football has even been stronger. With the exception of a few countries, many championships have delivered their verdicts on the pitch, behind closed doors, of course, but titles that would count. In Europe, there are a lot of them, as Africans have been crowned champions with their clubs. In England, France, Belgium and Portugal, the continent representatives have defended Africa, leading the park, Liverpool star Sadio Mane and Mohamed Salah, although the Senegalese ended the season with some disappointment. Sadio Mane has a reason to be disappointed this season, finishing the fifth in the ranking of the best this season in England, though it seems frustrating after this breathtaking season, but still Mane has to be happy over this long-awaited trophy he helped Liverpool win. The race became league winners after 30 years of adventure. Once again, the Lions of Teranga and the Egyptian Mohamed Salah will have the greatest recognition of the resounding success of the Reds. With the Guinean Nabi Keita and Cameroon and Joel Matip, they definitely became legends of the Reds and the English Premier League. In France, two other African, Idrissa Ghana Gay and Eric Chupomoting, were crowned after the final end of the season because of the coronavirus. In Turkey, Senegalese Dembaba, Kevadian Carlos Dos Santos Rodriguez and Nigerian Okochuku offered Istanbul Basekhir their first league title. As for the Belgian Championship, Club de Bruges has five African Senegalese Kreplin Diata, Nigerian Emmanuel Bonaventure Dennis, Angolan Clinton Mata and Ivorian Simon Deli and Kasumu Odilo. Getting to Portuguese Championship FC Porto, which has the most African players, we have Chancel Mbemba from the DRC, Cameroon and Vincent Abubakar, Senegalese Mamadou Lomdiai and Mohamed Mbai, as well as Malian Moussa Marega and Cape Town, Vedia Jose Luis. Finally in Romania, Jordan Ikoko from DRC, Senegalese Stefan Baji, Mavi Chibota of Congo, and Rugini Bissau Josinho won the title with the Ludo Gore. All these are symbols of winning to Africans. Once again, congratulations to these African footballers who are the pride of the continent. They remain references for thousands of young people who also hope to make history. We've got one of them, Senegalese under-20 international Moussa Kaliloujite, on the line from Grenoble, France. He's one of the revelations of this season's French League 2 championship. Welcome, Moussa. As I was saying a while ago, you've had a great season, even if COVID-19 brought some disruptions. How do you rate this first season in France? First of all, we thank God because it was not easy at all. When you're young and you arrive at a team that's in the process of setting up, the beginning is often difficult. When I arrived, I wasn't in the starting lineup. But thank God I played my first game against Gungam. And I came back in the second half and scored a double. Since then, I've gradually started to build up my confidence 
and it's really been some work that's paying off. Unfortunately, I couldn't achieve my goal. And as you said, the pandemic ruined everything. It stopped the championship, and that's why I couldn't reach my goal. But it is God's will, and I accept it. Your performances have gone unnoticed by some clubs. In particular, we've heard about the interest of Levante in Spain. So are you tempted by transfer, or do you want to stay in Grenoble to confirm before a possible move to a bigger club? Indeed, I prefer to stay one more year to have more playing time because the coach has confidence in me. It's not the same thing as going to another team and sitting on the bench. That doesn't suit me. Personally, I have been contacted directly, but they went through my agent, and he is the one who keeps me informed of everything. But I'm not ready to leave Grenoble yet. I want to stay for another year and then we'll see just how it goes next year. You are an under-20 international. The senior national team is without doubt a big dream. Is that your top aim at this particular moment? At the moment, that's the main objective, just for the senior national team. And that's because there's nothing more beautiful than wearing your country's jersey. It's every player's dream. After that, it's up to me to do the rest, to work harder, to score more goals, and then people will appreciate the rest. As I said, each one takes his turn. And as we're progressing at League 2 level in France, there's visibility. The league is well watched and people know me a little bit in Senegal for having played in the local league. So it's time to show more of me here. For me, I didn't do anything last season. I've already turned the page. I know it won't be easy for me this season, so I have to prepare really well. And I have the ambition to play for my country. So in order for me to be called up, I need to score more goals compared to last year. That's it really. Merci beaucoup. Thank you very much, Moussa, and good luck for the rest of your career. Moussa Djite, attaquant sénégalais, évolue. Moussa Djite, a Sénégalese striker playing for Grenoble Foot 38 in French League 2, who scored seven league goals last season. Let's talk about the worrying issue of Ivorian defender Eric Bailey. The Manchester United player has a long history of injuries. The most recent was against Chelsea in the FA Cup semi-final. And even if there was more fear than harm, this obtained injury confirms the fragility of the Ivorian international despite his solidarity on the pitch. It is one blow after the other. One of the best African defenders in recent years, Eric Bailly, is surely one of the most fragile players. Since the 2015-2016 season with Villarreal, the Ivorian international has suffered no fewer than eight injuries, the last of which came on July 16 against Chelsea in the FA Cup semi-final. The Manchester United defender taken off in a nick brace. The Ivorian needed lengthy treatment after twice clashing heads, the second time with teammate Harry Maguire. Bayi needed treatment on the field, and Manu manager Ole Gunnar Solskjaer said his team lost their concentration because of it as they lost 3-1 to Chelsea. This new injury is a reminder of how frighteningly fragile his health is. Since arriving in Manchester in 2016, the Ivorian defender has been on the sidelines for at least 310 days and missed 64 games. Too many for a player who is so solid on the pitch, but who is undoubtedly subject to the law of rigor in the Premier League. At Villarreal, he had already suffered three injuries for a total of 49 days out of action and missed 10 matches in a single season. A nasty knee injury even denied the Manu defender a place at the 2019 Africa Cup of Nations final in Egypt. The the 26-year-old joins a long line of extremely talented but frail players such as Abu Dhabi, Ronaldo and Barca's Osman Dembele. These talents have been wasted by multiple injuries that have undermined their careers. 
It's incredible life for a defender. It's looking forward to end all of his misery. Now it's time for women's football, and we're pleased to have one of the biggest stars in African football, Ajara Nshut Njoya. The indomitable lioness, who has just started her second season at Valerenga in Norway. Already she scored two goals so far. Thank you for joining us, Ajara. So tell us about how you're living during the season's disruption under such special conditions. Hello to you and viewers. The resumption is quite special, but the hardest part was the lockdown period without soccer. Now we are playing football and it's less painful, although life has resumed slowly. We're on the fourth day of the Norwegian Championship and my club has recorded its third victory. I've scored three goals in four games. Can you imagine that it was a bit complicated to be cut off from football because of this virus? How exactly did you manage this uncertain period? It was very difficult because it was something new. We were locked up at home, going out only for necessary needs. We had received a program from our technical staff in order to maintain ourselves daily, and this allowed us to resume with a certain acceptable physical condition, but living without touching the ball was not easy. So let's talk about the decision of CAF to cancel 2020 Women's AFCON. What do you think of this decision, which has already been denounced by many, including FIFA General Secretary Fatma Samura and its president Gianni Infantino? Getting out of the lockdown and receiving that hammer from the AFCON 2020 cancellation on the head was not easy. The African representatives at the Olympic Games Tokyo 2021 will present themselves with the last official match played in March 2020. This reduces our chances of getting a medal and making an honorable tournament. This AFCON was an opportunity for our younger sisters to test a first official competition and for our elder sisters to play a probably their last international competition. Uh, do you probably wish CAF would reverse its decision and reschedule the AFCON? Of course, if we could have postponed the Chan 2020 and the 2020 AFCON and other men's competitions, I said that in comparison, we could have postponed the women's AFCON as well. At a time when all world football bodies are talking about the development of women's football, the cancellation of the AFCON is not right. Thank you very much, Ajara. We wish you a great season and that you come out tops this season. Let me remind you, she's a double silver medalist of the Women's AFCON with Cameroon, a runner-up in the Russian Women's League as well as in Norway. We hope that the season will really win the Women's Championship. We now head for the United States to discover a football academy, an initiative of a former Togolese international, Agbeniga Amuzon, launched in the state of Maryland. The elite soccer youth development academy is opening to youngsters who dream of a career in football. Our correspondent in the United States of America, Irene Herman Hugo, has the story. These little boys between the ages of four and six are taking their first steps and learning how to play football. They are trained to become amateurs or professionals in the sport. The Elite Soccer Youth Development Academy, which is taking its first steps in the state of Maryland and the northeastern United States, is an initiative of former Togolese football international Abegnigan Amazu. The goal is to provide children with a unique football experience. Uh, here, we learn first the basic, how to run, and now we introduce the ball like everything else, passing and attacking, everything about ball control. We start to develop this slowly. In respect to the sanitary instructions, the children were able to spend a moment of discovery with monitors listening to give the maximum information. I like playing soccer because it's fun and you're running around a lot with the ball. I could kick a ball, score, I could dribble and everything. I love it because it's something we can do after school or camp. And they make great friends. It's very healthy for them. And uh, we know that it's, it's, it's doing a lot for the community at the same time. So it's a very good cause.
The school doesn't want to compete with a local clause, but is positioning itself as a complement, as Irene Hugbo, the African News correspondent, United States, explains. Objective the aim here is not to train children for major competitions, but rather to give them basic football skills for their personal development. Irene Hamon Hugbo from Montgomery County, Maryland, U.S., for African News. And on that note, we end Football Planet on African News. The show can also be found on our website at www.africanews.com. Thank you for your company and have an excellent week. Also, thanks to the technical and production team for a good job done. Goodbye.